we're going to be creating our own form of Mr. Brainwash style um, street art. We're going to take a regular photograph and we're going to be able to try to uh, simplify it down to almost like a stencil and we're going to try to use some uh, paintbrush tools to do some graffiti like effects. And we're going to end up multiplying that over and over just like Andy Warhol did a technique that Mr. Brainwash uh, has sort of uh, ripped off. So if you're on the general section of our team there is a uh, announcement that says this is the site for photo editing. There's a link right there. It's called photop.com. Photo P-E-A, just like a, a P in the pod. If you click that, that should bring you directly to Photo P in your browser. Uh, when you open it up, for a lot of you, you'll be opening up for the first time. The issue for me is I've already opened up this um, program. What most of you are seeing if you've opened it up is a giant like warning uh, label with a big X. So let's just exit that out so that what you see in front of you is exactly the same thing as I have over here. I'll give you a second to find the link and then open it up. But when you open up the, this uh, website for the first time, you're going to get a big message up top, a sort of disclaimer that has a giant X to exit out. Please exit out and then you should be looking at the program as I see it right now on my screen. Once you've opened it up, what you should see in front of you is another menu window over here with the photo P logo on it and what says new project, open from computer, templates, etc., etc. Now this program is a free program. It only works for us on the actual website because we're not going to download it and we're not going to buy it. It is actually a ripoff of Photoshop. It is almost identical to Photoshop. Um, I think after a certain amount of time, certain uh, coding is no longer copyrighted. So in this case, uh, Photo P has made their own sort of bootleg version of Photoshop, which actually works nicely for us since we're sort of making bootleg street art anyway. So using bootleg Photoshop will be good. Inside of this box, we're going to see Open From Computer and I want you to click open from computer. And what you want to go is you want to go find the picture that you saved, um, the picture that you submitted for this project. Uh, for me, I believe I named it and I have a lot of files to look for uh, over here. So I'm going to just kind of switch over and find my picture. And I've got it. And I've got my picture. It's a PNG. It could be a JPEG. It could be whatever. But we're going to click open. And if you did this correctly, you should be looking at your photo right now inside of Photo P. What you have on the top over here is your normal file edit image layer kind of menu. This menu is part of the program, not the menu you have above for Chrome or for whatever your browser is. Okay, So this gray, dark gray area, this is the menu for the actual program. Right beneath it, are some options that are specific to all the tools that you have over here. When you click on a different tool, you get a different function. And there are a lot of different tools and a lot of different options. I will be going through only a couple of them to start. We're going to do baby steps. But this is your toolbar. Obviously, this is your workspace where you have your photograph. And then on this side, you should see a layer window. That should be in the default. Please keep your, um, your screen in the default. If you don't see layers right now, there might be a small button here that says Lay on it. Click on it to see your layers or go to Window and then Layers, and you'll see that it should show you your layers. Window Layers, if you don't see your layers right here. And what your layers right now are going to look like is they're going to be an eyeball. There'll be a tiny thumbnail of your picture, and it'll say the word background. If you click that eyeball, it makes the picture disappear. All right, This checkerboard you're seeing right now is actually the symbol for invisible in this program. So that's when it disappears. It, that's invisible. This is reappears, you see everything like that. So you should see your photograph right now. It should say background with it. And what we're going to do is we're going to lock this layer. And by locking it, I clicked on the little padlock looking icon right above the word background. And you notice that padlock appears on this background layer. 
So we want to lock our background to start with. The next thing we want to do is we would like to make some multiple copies of this background. To copy the background, I'm going to teach you the shortcuts to do that. All right, you're not going to be able to see me do this because it's on the keyboard. For you, you should be holding down the control key. So press the control key and hold it down. And then you want to press the letter J. When you hold the control key down and press the letter J, it will instantly make a copy of this. So when you look in your layers window, you should see two layers, one called background, one called background copy. Background copy looks exactly the same and it's another little image, like the same as the photograph that you've opened. I'm going to make an additional copy. Again, I'm going to hold down control and press the letter J. Now what you should see in front of you is one layer that says background. That background layer has been locked. Above it, you should see background copy and then a background copy too. So you're going to see three layers right now of exactly the same thing. All right. I'm going to make a fourth layer, but I'm going to do it slightly differently. This fourth layer is going to be just a blank layer. To create a new layer that's completely untouched and has no pictures or anything on it, you're going to go all the way down at the bottom of the layer window, and you are going to go look for new layer. New layer, there's a bunch of different icons down here. New layer looks like a sheet of paper with one corner folded up. It is going to be next to delete layer, which looks like a little waste paper basket. If you mouse over them, they'll tell you what they are, and you're looking for a new layer. When I click new layer, you'll see layer one appears up here, and you can see inside of layer one, it's just that checkerboard symbol, which we already know is invisible. I know these are a lot of steps, but this is something that you can always review when I post the video. So to get started, you should see multiple copies of your original background, and then you should also have a layer one. The first tool we're going to use over here is going to be your paint bucket tool. Your paint bucket tool is going to be on your toolbar. It's going to be underneath as an option of the gradient tool. The gradient tool looks like a square that has like sort of faded from light to dark. If you can't find the gradient tool, you can just press the letter G. It when the letter G is a shortcut to the gradient tool and it will select it for you. So if you can't find it, that's one way to find it. If you click and hold on that gradient tool, you're going to find the paint bucket tool. All right? And that one is hiding underneath there and it says paint bucket tool on it. When you click it, it's sort of a simplified version of a bucket pouring over paint. Now that we've selected our paint bucket tool, we should all be on layer one. You can see layer one is highlighted dark. And down here on the lower part of your tool, uh, toolbar, you're going to see two boxes. These boxes are going to be different colors from what you see on my screen. I have this light green in here because that's the last color I was using. You probably have two black boxes if this is the first time you're doing it. How to know, you're going to see the letter D. And you want to choose the box right above letter D. All right, wherever that is down over here. If you click the letter D, you're going to see automatically it makes one black and one white. So everyone should click the letter D to start. The top box right now is black. The bottom box is white. The little icon next to the D is the color swap. There's two arrows going up and down. I've hit D, and now I'm going to press the color swap. And what I have is I have white in my top box. I've selected my paint, uh, my paint bucket. I have changed my color here to white. I'm going to go to my picture and I'm going to hit the paint bucket. What you notice now is this, this layer is no longer clear. You no longer see in the little thumbnail here the checkerboard boxes. Layer one is now all white. Now what we're going to do on layer one is we're going to play around a little bit with paint brushes so you can have a little paintbrush fun. Right now I'm going to go to my paintbrush. A paintbrush is about three above my paint bucket. 
If you can't find the paintbrush, you can press the letter B. The letter B is a shortcut to get that paintbrush. The paintbrush will paint in whatever color you have in that top box. We don't want to paint white on white. So we're going to go down to that white box, the one we just used down in my color picker, and I'm going to click on it. When I click on it, a small box appears called the color picker and you can see you have a sort of gradient from white to black and from white to red most likely. And then you see you have a rainbow over here. You can slide that little bar on the rainbow up and down and you can change to different colors. If you click on the color picker, you'll notice that your color changes over here. I'm gonna click around. What I want you to do is I want you to pick a color, any color you want, but make sure you click somewhere in the middle closer to the light side. What I want is a really pastel color, something like uh, Easter eggs. It can be green, it can be blue, it can be pink, whatever. We're gonna hit okay. We can change the colors later on, it's not a big deal. So whatever color is in our color picker, we're going to use our paintbrush, and now we're going to click and drag, and you'll notice you can just draw, just like you might have done on Microsoft Paint um, a million times. You can go ahead and paint a couple squiggly lines, whatever you want. It doesn't matter at this point. You're just kind of learning how to use the software. What I want is I do want to get rid of this stuff because this is just a little practice. So one of the ways you're gonna be able to get rid of things is to undo them. The shortcut for undo is to hold again, hold down the control key and then press the letter Z. And you'll notice I'm able to undo the things that I just did. So again, I'm gonna paint and make some zigzaggy lines. Then I'm gonna hold control and then press the letter Z. Now, you might want to adjust the size of your paintbrush, and I'm going to show you how to adjust the size of your paintbrush. You can see the little circle right here represents mine. Up top, when I'm in the paintbrush, you're going to see another logo down here that looks exactly like it, and next to it, there's going to be a circle with a number underneath it and a triangle. That number might not be the same number that, that I have. It says 15 for mine but I'm gonna click on that little triangle and what's gonna happen, you're gonna see a drop-down menu. That drop-down menu has something called size and hardness. We don't wanna mess with this one. We wanna leave that at 100% right now. I'll show you different things you can do with that. But if I adjust the size, you can see I can make a much larger paintbrush. I can adjust it down smaller and make a smaller paintbrush. I'm going to undo that by holding control and then pressing Z. Underneath the size and the hardness, there are also other types of brushes. These are set by default. What I want to switch over to is I want to look over on the right hand side for this one that kind of looks like a cloud and has the number seven on it. There are similar ones here, but I want to look for that sort of one that looks a little bit like a cloud like a puffy little cloud, and it has the number seven underneath it. I'm gonna click it automatically. Okay, when you have it like this, you may not notice any difference. But what I wanna do is I wanna go up there and I'm gonna adjust the size of this brush to something over like 150. Don't make it 1,000. Also don't make it like 84. We're gonna pick a number from like 150 to 200, doesn't really matter. And you're gonna notice that now that brush has been changed. It has sort of a different characteristic. And I want everybody to switch to that brush. Now what you're gonna do is you can play around a little bit over here. I want you to use at least three different colors. So when you go to change your colors, again, I want you to keep it to a very, very light color, pastel, like. Easter eggs. And what you can do is you can just mess around and kind of just doodle a little bit with your paintbrush. You can adjust the colors over here 
by sliding the bar and just messing around with them. And again, you're only using the paintbrush. You've made your paintbrush large and you've selected one of the stylized paintbrushes. You have adjusted your colors by clicking on the color picker. And by sliding the bar up and down here, you can choose other colors. And I would like you to at least do three different colors. I'm going to give everybody a second to play around with that a little bit and know that you can just do this and come back later on and redo it or change it if you'd like. And what I'm doing is I'm just creating what's going to be a background for our, for our image. So each one of you should be on layer one right now. You should be creating a blob, some blobs of sort of drippy looking kind of colors. You're going to notice that that little layer one looks exactly like the small picture you've created. And you shouldn't be able to see these layers. They should all be underneath layer one right now. I'm going to pick one more color, and then I'm going to move on to the next part of what I'd like to do. And I'm just clicking and creating a little bit of texture on there. How many colors do we need? At least three. At minimum three. Okay, so I've added a lot more than that. You see it really doesn't take that much time to do it. And you can adjust the size of your brush too if you want to make it slightly bigger marks or slightly smaller ones. That's fine, but I want at least three. So once you have a little blob of three colors, I want to move on now to the next part. And you'll be able to come back to this and add more to it once you understand how to do things. So now what I want to do is I want to go switch over my layers. I want to look at my layer and I want again, you see there's eyeballs next to all of them. By clicking on or clicking off of that eyeball, you make that layer invisible. And you can see what's underneath it. In this case, I have my photo of Ai Weiwei underneath it. What I want to do is I want to kind of reorder these layers. So I'm going to click on layer number one, and I'm just going to drag it down so it's just below at least two of my other layers. So right now I've changed the order of my layers. My painting is still down here, but above it, there are two images of Ai Weiwei, identical ones. So we want to take that painting that we created. For all of you, it's probably called layer one. And we want to grab it. I'm just going to undo mine. Take it from the top, click and drag, and drag it so it's beneath the other ones. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch my tools, and I'm going to go to my background top copy. What I'm going to do with this first one is, is I, once I've selected it, I'll make sure everybody's selected on the same top layer and you see the photograph now, the original photograph that you've created. Now you're going to go to Image, Adjustments, and then you're going to go down to Threshold. When you do that, you should be looking at a black and white version of your picture. You can change, you can see the threshold is a slider bar. I'm going to tell you to leave it exactly on the default, dead center. If you moved it around already, just close it, go to image, adjustments, threshold. And then you'll see a black and white version of your face or whatever picture you use. When you see that, and if you don't see that, there's a preview button. Make sure that's selected if you don't see what you're seeing on my screen. You're going to then hit OK. So you've changed that one background. You can see right now on your layers you have that black and white version, your original color picture, you have your doodle of colors and blobs, and then you have your background. 
what we're gonna do right um, now i'm sorry sorry um i somehow like wrote on the like regular like, just, like one of the just pictures. just press undo just, i tried and it, it's like not working okay um what i'll tell you is is that once you have it it's easy enough to go back and redo i would just start with a fresh picture again okay okay Next step over here when we have the background and you see what I have right over here, I'm going to go back up to image and to adjustments. And this time I'm gonna go down to hue and saturation. So again, that is image, adjustments, hue and saturation. And when you click that, you should get a pop-up menu. It says hue and saturation on the top. There are a couple of steps to this. Number one is to go down and hit colorize. Once you've hit colorize, we're gonna take the lightness and we're gonna slide the lightness up. I do not wanna make it darker. I only wanna make it lighter. You should slide the lightness up so this looks like gray, okay? So get away from the middle. Don't go all the way to the end somewhere in between where you see gray is perfect. Once you've changed the lightness, the next step is gonna to be to change the saturation. Okay, you see if I drag it this way, nothing happens. It won't let you go below zero. But as I go closer and closer to 100, it changes color. And it should change to red to start with. You don't have to go all the way to the end, but you should go past until you see this looking really reddish. Now, the last one is hue. And if you could slide hue any which way and it will change your picture to a different color. Here you can choose which color you want. You can also adjust this to make it a darker, lighter version of the color by adjusting these. So what I would tell you to do is at this point, Choose and pick a color for this picture. I'm gonna go with this sort of orange. I'm gonna click OK. Right now you should have changed this picture to the black and white threshold and then by using hue and saturation you should have been able to color it. There's gonna be one last step for today and then I'm going to stop the class and the recording and you guys will be able to do this tomorrow. Again, if you're following the video, it should take you about 15, 20 minutes. I'm going pretty slow here. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to erase the white area in this picture. To do that, again, still on our background layer, we're gonna to go to select we're going to go to color range. When it opens up, you're gonna see a little black and white picture. All you have to do is hit OK. Once you see, hit OK, you may notice a small little dotted line around a lot of your edges. If you hit delete, you'll see they disappear. And what you'll notice is, is on your little thumbnail, you have a little checkerboard and the whatever color you chose. I can see through this picture and I can see this picture underneath it. What I wanna do is I wanna click the eyeball and then what you should see in front of you is your outline of the face that we just did and underneath it in the white areas, you should see some of your paintbrush. Uh, Mr. B. Yes. Do we hit? I mean, do we hit backspace for delete or? You can hit backspace for delete. I'm sorry, I have a different keyboard. The last bit of this is to hit command, uh, Control D to deselect. We're not completely finished with this project. The next steps are going to be to sort of add some more texture and another layer to it, and then create a repetitive pattern of it. So this is what we're working towards. Today, this is as far as we're getting. 
What I'm going to tell you is, is once you're done with this much and you've got this much done, I want you to go to File, Save as PSD. When you click Save as PSD, it is automatically going to download a PSD file, Photoshop file, of what you did. That Photoshop file will be just the same thing tomorrow. You'll be able to edit it. By default, it downloads to your download folder. To submit this as the project, you should take a screenshot of this and hand it in. For those of you at home, you can hold down your Windows key, the Shift key, and press the letter S to take a screenshot. My keyboard's a little different, so I'm using Snip and Sketch. But what I want you to do is take a picture of the entire screen. That way, I can see what you made and I can see your layers. Realize that this is only halfway through this. This will be what you submit for tomorrow. The video that I just produced, I'm stopping right now and I'm gonna to post to YouTube. It will be on our general section.